All right, hey guys, back with the episode three on how to make Rayman an Unreal Engine. Uh, first things first, um, we're going to make improvements to the ledge grab. I I was just working on it to uh, you know make sure it actually works before I decide to record. So we're gonna go through what I just did. Now this is a mess. Let's quickly clean it up and get something. I'm going to collapse these, but I'll tell y'all what it's about in a bit. Um, I don't know what the hell to call this. Let's just call it, um, I don't know. Um, well, what this is supposed to do is it's supposed to take the distance into account. We only need one in there quickly um but uh, what this does is it takes the um all right let's not talk about that until we talk about the first thing that should be actually talked about uh so quickly um I guess we'll call it that. All right. Um, we can get rid of that. All right, so... This is what we originally had. Oops. Uh, this was our first trace, and that trace sent us where we're supposed to go. Well, now... Uh, yeah, all right, so... Well, now, what we got is... A second trace that can actually let's quickly look at that already learning on my own stuff as well all right um, so what we do here is you know after we check that this has in fact hit something um, wall or whatnot we now send out another trace, which will now come out of the location that this trace hit. So it'll come out of here, uh, and we actually want it to cast downward from the front, or, or from where this came from. So we're going to take that location, plug it into a vector addition, and add 50 to it. Then at the end will be the actual location where it hits. Uh, after that, we will take the uh, the hit result and we'll detect the distance at which it got hit. So this is so since this is a it, it, it pretty much finds out from where the trace started to where it ended and where it hit in between that. So. What we want to do is we want it to make sure it hits between 30 but above 0. If it hits 0, we're most likely hitting inside of a wall. Uh, if it returns anything above, at, that would just be it. Uh, this is just the number I found good. I don't know, I don't know how to explain that. This is just the number I found that was good. So uh, This is the distance, and that would be going into less than 30 and greater than 0. And let's quickly swap those around so it doesn't look bad in here. And all that does is it, it's just, you know, checking the distance from the initial start to where it actually hit. And if that is in between the distance, we actually will do the rest of it. This is what we already had on the last video. Uh, and here I'm actually going to... Uh, all this is doing is adding 30, because, um, yeah, all this is doing is adding 30. I just didn't replace it from what it was originally, which was minus 10. I just subtracted a, you know, a negative number. But um, that just adds 30. It still sets your movement mode to zero. It does all the stuff it did before in the last video, but this time, uh, we actually added the ability to attached to any moving actors, which, uh, what this does is it's, um, 
the actor you hit in the initial trace, it'll attach the Rayman actor to that actor, so any movement that on the actor is, if it's like, I don't know, going up and down, left, right, forward, backwards, etc., uh, Rayman will follow along with it, and here's what we should have. So, the initial trace, and then the final trace. So the final trace only happens, or the second trace only happens when this trace has detected that Rayman's actually hit something, so like that. And here's a moving platform example. You may want to adjust the values on that, so it actually you know, fits. If you find better values, uh, feel free to comment and share to anyone else watching the video. But, uh, yeah, that, uh, that should work. Uh, anyway, uh, our next tutorial thing will actually be, I think what I had planned was I was going to do, I don't know, I think it was climbing up vines, like surface vines, climbing up those, and jumping in between walls. Um, neither of which I know how to do, but we're going to figure that out together. So, first off, let's get us a little thing set up for Rayman to actually jump between. All right, that's perfect. So, all right, let's go into the Rayman thing. And so he does these traces for ledge. Um, and we're pretty much going to do something similar two traces, but we're doing it out like from his left side and right side. So let's make another function and let's call it, uh, Wall jump, I guess. Just you're jumping in between walls. But, uh, we're gonna drag from here. We're gonna do another sphere trace. I prefer sphere trace because while the line trace is more accurate, the sphere trace, it's a sphere. You can choose its uh, radius. It go, it's radius, so you can actually have less precision, but it's better for instances like this where you're trying to platform. So we're going to get a search trace by channel, and we're going to get, uh, first off, we're going to get actor location, and I'm actually going to quickly test out how this would look. Um, uh, this is what we're going to be needing here. Um, it's the same as this. If he jumps, it sends out the trace. But inside here, we're going to want to get right vector. Oops. There it is. Get actor right vector. And we're going to want to multiply by about 100, maybe actually like 60. I don't know. We'll see how it looks. And we're going to want to add these vectors together. And that'll be the end. Our radius, let's say about 15. All right. I forgot to change this to a draw type. Now, let's see how that is. It's probably going to come from his feet. Oh, no, it actually comes from the perfect spot. Right. Um... Probably going to set up a little bit different thing than what we got here. This is just on event landed. Um, we're going to have it pause the wall jump so he's not constantly got this uh, right trace. What I think I'm actually going to do is... Um, Alright. 
Alright, what I'm actually going to do is probably have a, another timer that plays when he jumps. So, it's, and it'll like, I don't know, probably detect or, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what I end up doing. I don't know if this is the most efficient, but it works. That's all that matters right now. All right, so we're going to want this again. Um, sorry about the train that may be in the background right now. Uh, anyway, uh, I think negative 60, that should just work, right? All right, yeah. All right, so now he's got two traces that come out there, and both should work here. Yep. All right, so if both of these hit something. We will set movement mode to none. And we'll do a balloon of in between walls. And anytime we jump, I want that to be set back to false for animation purposes. Eh, we may not need to do that, but I'm going to do it precautionary. So end event on jump, just set it back to zero. So now if we go in between these walls. Yeah. Now, what we actually want to do is... Um, We want to, first off, we want to actually set it to where when he is, or when he's pressed space again. So instead of, okay, okay here it is, here it is. That's why I was thinking that this wasn't right. Um, yeah, we want to call wall jump if he's in air. If he's in air, yeah, we want to call wall jump. If he's so, so this is the um, input action jump. Uh, we go into the branch, and this is him being detected if he's falling or not. If it goes to false, we uh, set gliding. But, but if we go into wall jump, we can actually. Um, I'm gonna quickly move the in between walls variable into movement anyway. Uh, We'll actually set false on that, so he can only hover if, um, like that, but if perhaps you were to go in between walls and 